Wumble combo, wumble combo. <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's been a while, uh, sorry about that, but I'm here now, so let's get cooking. Today I wanna look at the Microsoft Zune 1. There were three generations. There was the Zune 1, Zune 2, and then Zune HD, which can be called the Zune 3. So, without further ado, here is Zune 1. So this thing would have retailed for $249.99 despite this sticker from Walmart from back in the day saying $249.94. This is actually five cents cheaper for some reason at Walmart. Whatever Walmart this was, I don't know. I have no idea what region of the country this came from. It came from somewhere, that's all I know. And I will put the equivalent price in today's money on the screen. So you'll see 2006, versus 2024. Now, let's look at the box. You saw the front, and here's the back. It's a nice view of what the model looks like. The bottom has little bits of information, as well as the serial serial tag and barcodes. Top, top sides, very bland. Yeah, so that's the box. Now, the, out, the outer layer of this seems to be plastic. So that's why there's so many messed up markings all over it. I don't know what that's all about. I don't know why they chose to do that, but most of the packaging for uh, larger accessories like this and um, promotional things have this same style of packaging. So things like the uh, the rare Zoom vinyl collection also has these markings on its box because they use the same style of box for the first generation of stuff. So it looks kind of ugly when it takes any kind of small impact. I'll show you. I just put my nail right here. I already got markings. See that? So, yeah. That's unfortunate. So what does it come with? Let's take a look. It comes with the Zune, the earphones, sync cable, manuals, and startup disk. System requirements are very simple. You just needed Windows XP with Service Pack 2 and 200 meg megabytes of hard drive space. Doesn't mention RAM but there is some hardware acceleration that the later version of the program can utilize. Okay, let's open the box. So inside you got this nice little zoom gradient going on. Not gradient, but um, repeating pattern. It goes all the way around, except on this side you also have Welcome to the Social, which was the Zune tagline at the time. Before we crack open the Zune, which this flap will lead us to, let's take a look at the back. You have a flap right here, and that will lead us to the accessories. There's one accessory that wasn't listed, and that is this. It's the egg bag that you can carry your Zune around in. So that's nice. That's a nice little freebie you get there. And then, of course, there is the CD case, which houses the manuals. I'm not going to open it. Instead, I'm going to dump it all out. Oh, also, you also get a Zoom sticker. It's not transparent, so there is a white background to it at all times, but it is nice that they give you a sticker. It's similar to what the Apple was doing with their products, and I think they still do it to this very day. So here's the product guide. This is the generic guide for all the Zoom products. Here's the start guide for the Zoom itself. It tells you the controls, what connector you have, and what to do to use the controls. This is just a basic load it up and then connect it to your computer little pamphlet. And then of course, back in the day, there was a Zune service for music. You could stream and, and then download DRM music and then listen to it offline. Kind of like Spotify, but way before Spotify. So this was 2006 and 7 that they were doing this stuff. So yeah, ahead of the curve, a, a, a little too ahead because it didn't last too long. And here's the download code for the website that doesn't exist anymore. And the service that doesn't exist anymore. And of course, here is your CD, which I seem to actually do have to open. 
So let's try to do that without destroying the uh, cardboard. Yeah, I, th I think I'll cut it. There we go. All right. Here is the Zune CD, which has dust in it for some reason. This is the startup disc. Do not make illegal copies. Right there. Very nice, very nice, very standard. Most of these players from back in the day came with a little CD to load up your software. It was faster than downloading because at the time, internet was crap. Trust me, I tried playing online video games at that era, and it was difficult. Dial-up was way prevalent at the time, and so you had slow speeds on dial-up, so if you're trying to play a game or download something and someone calls on the phone, your internet stops. Because it was one or the other, landline phone calls or internet, and it was hell on earth. I'm glad we're past that now. So let's put this back in its little case. So that's you get that stuff, and now we get to look at the Zune. There she blows. There's a little tab right here you can pull to help lift it up. There's the Zune and its little plastic wrap. Now this is a slightly used Zune, so there is not the sticker that would be right here that would say, uh, welcome to the social, or did it say that? I don't know. It, it was, it's the little sticker that always is on top of the screen to protect it during shipping and all that stuff. And then it has little, little bits of information or whatever text they want to put on there. That sticker is not present. However, I do have the wrapper that it would go in. And inside we have the earbuds plus the little foam ear tips, which probably will disintegrate if I squish them too much or even take them out. Here's the little wrapper. Oh, also, here's the sticker on here. Warning, loud music can damage your hearing. Read product guide. Thanks for that. I wouldn't have known otherwise. Here's the cable, neatly and tightly packed. Here is the little cap you get on both ends. Very nice touch. So yeah, that's the whole Zoom package right there. I should probably show you, show you the, every side of the device, huh? All right, well, here's the front. You got your buttons, your circle pad, which does not do scrolling or um, twisting of any kind. It's just D-pad, but with a circle shape. And then, as you can see, the bezel extends down to surround the buttons as well. On the side, it's just nice and simple. It's very thick. If you look on the edges, you can kind of see uh, the double-shot plastic where there's two layers that create a uh, fading effect on the edges against the light. Some models of Zune have a, a different color that creates an interesting effect with that fading. Uh, so the brown one has green, the black one has blue, and the pink, the orange, magenta, red, and white ones are more boring and they have just the same color as the main color. But still, they're all double shot plastic, as you can see on the edges here. And then on the back, you have a little circle indent right here. Uh, the logo, and that's it. The bottom, you have your Zune port surrounded by a black plate. Then on the top, you have your aux port and then your hold switch. So yeah, now you've seen the full Zune. So I guess now you're probably wondering, what does the Zune look like when you turn it on? Now, I can't show you what it looked like back in the day, not here in person, but I can bring up a picture of the old UI and then I will show you the current UI. So I'm gonna snap my fingers and then we're gonna look at that picture. Boop. Okay, this is the old UI. It's a bit different and it's a more rem reminiscent of the uh, Windows XP era of design, but the redesign that was ushered in with the second generation of Zune, it uh, redesigns the whole UI. And that's what brings to life fully the Metro design language. So let's see if this has any battery at all. No, it does not. I'll put it on the charger for a little while. Stay tuned. I'll be back in a flash. Boop. All right. See, that was fast. I'm back. All right. Here is the uh, Zune working. I put a background on it and it's ready to go. This is the main menu. There's music, videos, pictures, uh, the social tab, which allowed you to have friends and then send uh, music wirelessly and pictures wirelessly to your friends. 
and people nearby. Also have a radio, uh, a marketplace where using Wi-Fi you could uh, buy music, uh, a, a handful of games, not too many, but enough to keep you busy, Checkers, Hexic, Space Battle, Sudoku, and Texas Hold'em. Hexic is probably the best one here, and this one was also available on Xbox 360. It is a fantastic game. I suggest you look it up. And of course, then you just have the settings tab. So yeah, that, that's that. I'll show you the uh, music menu. So playing music, you, you have your giant album art, and then your bar for seeking, and then the information. Very simple, very easy to understand. And then you press the middle button to get your options. And that's that. That is music on a music device. Now what does the radio look like? Let's take a peek. Very, very simple. So you have your seek lane here, and then you have the station, and that's it. You press the middle button to decide if you want to uh, add a song to a cart if it identifies the song, and if it's 2006 through 2012, and you can still do that, but you can't do that anymore. And then you can also add to your favorites. I'm surprised it's even getting radio signals right now because usually you have to have the headphones plugged in, but I guess it was able to pick up something on that station just now. It said top 40 on it. So that's the Zune, it's packaging the Zune software, an image of the old version of the Zune software. Now what else is there to look at? Well I'm glad you asked! because what's left is looking at the Zune software. I'll go ahead and include a screenshot right now of the old Zune software, the one that would have shipped with this Zune, and then we will now transition to look at the current Zune software. So here we are in the Zune software. So I had to go into the virtual machine software that I have because Quick Play was not working on Windows 10. Perhaps I had too much music and it was taking forever to load and I was impatient. I don't know. But um, here's Quick Play. So this is what you can choose to go to when your your software starts up. So you can just start playing whatever you have listened to recently and stuff. There's also a smart DJ that helps. It's kind of like a, a Spotify's AI that helps guess what you want to listen to next. And so you can choose five artists that help you uh, choose the music that you're into right now. And then uh, play stuff quickly. You also have your pins, the stuff you want to listen to all the time. So like your playlists or songs. You can also uh, go to shopping from right here in the welcome tab. You can also uh, just quickly play something that's new that you added to your library recently. And then here's your history. And since this is on the virtual machine, I don't have anything populated. But that's all right. And so here's the collection tab. See how it's taking a moment to load? There's a lot of music. So I'm thinking since uh, Windows 10 doesn't play too well with uh, certain Zune features, Quick Play was just having a stroke. But the rest of the tabs work on Windows 10. It was just Quick Play I couldn't show you. I use the vir this virtual machine for music that I don't listen to. So when I get a new MP3 player, I uh, like to take the music off of it and add it to a library. But I don't add it to my main library because then I that would make finding music I want to listen to, really difficult, because there'd be so much stuff. As you can see, there's over 800 artists. It's not even done loading. It's actually going down. What the hell's going on? Okay, so here's the videos tab. There's nothing in there right now. It's, I don't have it synced up. Here's the pictures, podcasts, channels, which uh, I, I won't explain right now, because I don't really fully understand them. Let's check this. Go ahead and read this. All right, so that's channels. Now there's the marketplace, which uh, obviously doesn't really work. <laughs> and here's the social tab. So this is where you can have your social stuff. So this is your profile and then your inbox and then your friends. Yeah, and that's that. That's the Zune software. Of course, here's the menu for when you have a uh, Zune plugged in. You can check out all its stuff here. And then right here is where you'll see the syncing status. You can also uh, play CDs and rip them, just like in other music softwares, and then add stuff to playlists. Yeah, or over here is the playlist tab. So yeah, that's the software. Uh, let's go ahead and jump back into uh, IRL, and we'll finish up this uh, unboxing showcase. All right, guys, so that is the Microsoft Zune 1. Hopefully you enjoy taking a look at this thing. I know I did. I, I really like the Zune. It's as good, if not better, than the iPods of its era. 
and it just looks better. That well, obviously, obviously that's subjective. I think it looks better. It is a little thick though, but it does use the the a full hard drive, so that's the main reason it'd be extra thick. So yeah, if you want to see more uh, Zune unboxings. Uh, I have the rest of the models, except for HD, but I'm working on that. I have two more models to unbox. I think I have the full package for, for both of them. So uh, yeah, stay tuned, uh, subscribe for more stuff like that. Be sure to uh, like, subscribe, and hit that bell. Please and thank you. And uh, go ahead and leave a comment below what you think about the Zune unboxing experience. You know, does it got good stuff in it? Does it come with good accessories? You know, just... Just leave a comment to engage with the video, just something simple, you know, talk to your fellow commenters and have fun with it. Also, sorry for the, the long wait in between videos, you know, stuff happens and, you know, anxiety and, and things can get in the way, so, you know, I've just been working on uh, trying to get past anxiety, so, uh, hooray, I got the video recorded and it should be online and you should be watching it. So anyway, enough rambling, I will see you in the next video, bye bye.